All right, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. So this is part two of one part. First part was Neil deGrasse Tyson. This part is Dr. Phil explaining gender-affirming care for children and what's going on with it. So uh, we're going to be back, man. Yeah, man, look, Dr. Phil got some things to say. We're going to let him talk, and then we're going to come back. Um, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also, too, if you want to donate, Cash App's on the screen, man. But look, Dr. Phil, let's go. Mean care. You know, that's, that's interesting that they call it that, but really what they're talking about is hormonal therapy or sex reassignment surgery on children. And in fairness, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Endocrine Society, or whatever the exact name of that is, all of the major medical associations have signed off on this, Joe. They've signed off on it. And I have never seen those organizations sign off on anything with less information as to whether or not it does long-term harm of anything in my life. And when I when I ask about that, when I bring that up, then they immediately label you as transphobic. And I I thought that the deal was first do no harm. And all of the European countries, you know, Sweden, Norway, they they've all stopped doing it because they say we, we cannot say in good conscience that this does no harm because it does harm. If 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 you look at the long-term consequences if someone changes their mind at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, um, they can't decide which pajamas they want to wear at night. And their reason for doing it is it stops this drive for that there's a epidemic. It doesn't fix that. It doesn't fix all the comorbid issues that come along with feeling like they're in the wrong body. Um, but yet they're pushing this. And it's we're going to do some shows that are already taped that are revealing what the real results of this are. And I think people are going to be shocked that these medical organizations have signed off on this. I think they've just given in to the pressure. It's getting spooky. Y'all better hide your kids, man. I'm telling you right now. They coming for your kids, man. They coming for your children. They coming. There's no way in the world you're going to tell me that all of these high ranking companies is okay with children having the operation to switch their genders. You, 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 I don't think people realize how how detrimental that will be because what happens is is they're going to write a law or some type of law is going to happen where the child is going to be able to make decisions for themselves when it comes to that. I don't feel as though that that I'm a woman, I'm a boy, I'm a girl. So I want to be a girl and the parents ain't going to be able to stop it. It's like, what rights do a parents have nowadays when they come to their children? Don't got much, really. Don't got much. It's crazy. And for them, for, for this to be the subject that we're talking about, to me, is, is very scary. Because I'm looking at it from the point of view of, is this going to actually stick and go on for years? And then 10 years from now, 12 years from now, we got to deal with this? Or is this something that is just going to be come and go? This been around for a little bit now. And the more, the longer it goes on, the more they're going to say, well, we have enough research now. You know, and I want to say this, I want to say this before you go. 
you know when you get a, a sex operation or a sex change when you're a man or a woman they have to create something in your body it's a hole that hole is not natural so what happens it starts to close so what you got to do is you got to keep something in the hole every day to keep it open because your body automatically has a healing factor it's like if you if you put a hole in your ear what happens if you don't it's going to close up so they tell you to to keep putting the earring in and keep it in don't keep it out for too long that's what happens when you put a hole in your body it's not a real birth canal and it's not a real penis and it's not a real uh uh uh, uh vagina you know what i'm saying so it, it it ends up going like this and what happens if it when it closes it gets what they call uh uh infected plus coming out of it all types of stuff so we got to understand that this is this this is what we're dealing with and these people are delusional and they're feeding into other people's delusion because they want people to just be happy you it's okay because they're making a lot of money off of this let's go but you go ahead bro man um The children are definitely not safe. That's for one. They're definitely not safe. That's why I am the way that I am with my kids because I don't, I want them. The thing about, listen, and and I know we spoke about this some time ago, but I feel like I got to say it again. You know, these kids are still wet behind the ears. Some of them can't even wipe their ass right. As a father, as a mother, as parents in general, you can't allow these children to make the choices for themselves when they're too young to understand the damage that it can cause long term. There's no way I can allow any of my kids to make that type of choice. No way. You go let them make a choice like that, next thing you know, Next thing you know, they get old enough to understand and those feelings that were depleted come right back. Now, all of a sudden, they asking questions like, yo, why you allow me to do that? I didn't know no better. Why you allow me to do that? Then what's going to be your explanation? Exactly. Listen, listen I, I'm, I'm not for that. I'm not for that at all. That's crazy. Yeah, man. It's, it's it's very disheartening. It's very sad because I know there's a lot of people out there who are confused. And I know there's a lot of people out there who have mental issues. Yeah. Let's be clear here. This is a mental crisis that we're going through with this. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what people tell you. If you were born a man and you want to be a woman, that's fine. But you have to acknowledge that if you say you want to be a woman, it's different from saying you feel like a woman. Yeah. So if you want to be a woman, you could cross dress. But when you say you feel like a woman, you have a mental illness. Because some people can say they want to be Dracula. They dress up like Dracula on Halloween. But once I say I feel like Dracula, then I have a mental illness. That's the difference. And a lot of these people say they feel like women. How do you know what a woman feels like? You've never been a woman. Mm -hmm. How do you know what a man feels like? You've never been a man. You can't possibly know what a man feels like because you've never been a man. You can say you know what that man you would probably think what he feels, but you can never be a man because you don't know what a man really feels like because you've never been a man. That's like me saying, I know exactly how dogs feel, man. How? I've never been a dog. 
I've never been a cat. So how do I know how they really feel? That's when I tell you that you have a mental illness. But we ain't gonna stay too much on this. Hey man, shout out to Dr. Phil, man. That's something uh he's fighting a good fight. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. hey man, we gotta hear sketch pad. You know what it is, see y'all be fine. <laughs>